Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it throws you a bone just when you least expect it, right? Yeah. All right, welcome to Drag Strip Rumble. This is Top Fuel Eliminator at the Holly Hot Rod Reunion. I'm Cole Koontz. This is Whit Bazemore. Between the two of us, we might know what we're talking about. Hey. Uh, right? <laughs> I doubt it. Okay, but I will tell you this. It is hotter than... It's hot. Well, Dude, it's hot, and with these cars, they don't like a lot of heat. They don't like a lot of cold either. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't like a lot of right. heat, and it's hot, the track is hot, and it makes it challenging. So Jim Young is adapting to the heat from the 579 with numbers that uh, put him right in the mix, but his arch nemesis, Mindy Fry, currently number two in the points, lays down a number in the second session here, a 568 at 235 miles an hour that moves her to the top of the class. What can you say about that entry, Whit? Well, they're clearly the team to beat here, and uh, I would say over the, you know, even going back in the last year, they've been the team to beat. St. Tom Shelard's given them to be a very consistent race car. It runs great, it's strong, uh, it's pretty clean all yes. the time, it's, as it shows here. It doesn't hurt itself at all. Hurting for certain would be uh, Tyler Hilton and the big block Chevy entry. Uh, yeah, you know, they're struggling. They've been struggling for the past year or so, and uh, and they're still struggling. And you feel badly for them, but uh, it's a very challenging sport. You can't ever quit. You just have to dig deeper and, and look at your problems and fix them. Yes. So that brings us to Turbo Tim Cullinan and the Irish Car Bomb 426 powered entry. What about that name? What about that motor? Well, the name is not a reference to a, an actual bomb used by the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. Even though it does, this car does blow up on occasion, as it almost did right there. Yes. And the engine is a 426 uh, Chrysler Hemi, uh -huh. the late model, one of the most famous engines in drag racing. As compared to the 392 derivative uh, utilized by Dusty Green, who was um, not only not running a late model, but was also late just getting to the track. Yeah, and this is an early version of the 426 Hemi engine, and it's it's nicknamed the Whale, hence, hence right. the Whale reference. And yeah, they were late getting to the track, and you know it puts you behind the eight ball. It's a it's a very it's a very tough sport to make it in when everything goes right. When you're late to the track, for whatever reason, uh, it's it makes it ever more challenging. Yet they were able to put it in the show in this third session with a 589 at a slamming 242 miles an hour. Good run. Julius Hughes and Jason Greenwood now have a chance to mix it up with the uh, creme de la creme. You see the right big here. Boys. Yes. You hear Julius Hughes with the uh, the pedal clutch, the soft leave, but ultimately ends up eighth and last. Um, he'll take it. He will take it. And the eighth and last sometimes is okay because you right. did qualify, and yes. uh, I tell you what, there's no shame in that. So that brings us to the champion speed shop entry. This is a championship caliber team, and this car, you know, with a small block Chevy, is uh, it's, it's backfiring blowing out the first panel of every single run. So it's, it's actually running very well to that point. And if they could fix that problem and go to the finish line, the thing might pick up yes. at least half a tenth. Nice. But you can see the damage uh, to the engine. The, the first panel is out of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to win a race against the Mindy Fries and the Jim Youngs when your car doesn't go to the finish line. It's, they've got to get a handle on this, and I know Bob McClennan uh, is scratching his head, and they all are, and they're going to get it. You can see the first panel out of it there. Right. Um, it, it's a big problem, and it's doing it every single run. So there's something probably very simple that's wrong with that car, and uh, it's obvious, but it's not obvious until it is obvious. And sometimes these things can go on and make you crazy, but uh, they'll get it. They'll get it figured out. 
Well, they'll have to figure it out against their Bay Area uh, rival, Brendan Murray, with the uh, 426 elephant-powered car out of San Jose. Uh, so they've got one shot to get it right. Um, they face Brendan, Mindy's up against Julius Hughes, Dusty Green faces uh, Tim Cullinan, and the other pair is the two cheeseheads, Jim Young and uh, Jason Greenwood. And that is your, uh, your pairings for the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator. Uh, come back for more outrageous drag strip action. Jim Young from Salem, Wisconsin. I'm the owner and driver of the Young Guns uh, front engine top fuel dragster. As long as the track holds and we don't smoke the tires, we're going to either run a 560 at probably close to 260 or we're going to blow the tires off, one of the two. It's pretty sketchy right now with 140 degree track temperature. Hi, I'm Jason Greenwood, uh, driver of the JJ Motorsports Nostalgia Top Fueler. We were here till 11.30 last night, uh, trying to get the pieces together to make the first round, and uh, we're just gonna go out there, run our own race, and try not to repeat what we did in 2016. All right, here we are, Top Fuel Eliminator, first round, the Holly Hot Rod Reunion, and our first pair is the cheesehead equivalent of Kissing Cousins. Maybe, but who's that blowing their stuff up? Uh, that was Jason Greenwood. Mike Kern is helping tune the 392 derivative driven by Jim Young and also sorting out the 426 driven by Jason Greenwood. They're both out of Wisconsin. Yep, they're all out of Wisconsin, right? Is Mike Kern or is he Chicago? I think he's Chicago. Okay, well, that's close enough. Well, you can't say that. Did you not so. consult your press kit? I mean, all that information <laughs> yeah, is there. Yeah, the press kit. Yes. yes. Obviously, Jim Young is, is a favorite here. continues to prove that he needs to be dealt with. I'm Julius Hughes with Atlanta Speed Shop, Zot 6, Top Fuel Dragster. Uh, we're running this uh, KB Elephant motor, and we're revving it up, popping the clutch with a pedal clutch. And uh, the fans love it, sprays fuel everywhere. So we're going to see if we can tune it up a little bit for Mindy first round. Mindy Fry, track temps 150 degrees. We don't plan on beating ourselves on a hot track. So again, the topic is heat. Everybody's building heat and everybody's trying to deal with the heat. Well, you know, when you're when you're Mindy Fry and Tom Sheilar, the heat is more your enemy than with other people because they're really racing against themselves. They beat themselves. Uh -huh. Julius Hughes, the good old Atlanta boy, he's pretty laid back. Isn't yeah, he? he is laid back until it comes time to stage, and then he brings the RPMs up, not unlike, uh, say, an alcohol funny car or something. So he's the only pedal yeah. clutch in the car. But as he says, it sprays fuel everywhere, and the fans kind of like it. Right. You know, and I, yeah, he's, he's pretty laid back. I like that. Well, there he goes now. Swaps pedals and he's out on her. Wow, big time. Big time. So Mindy Fry has to drive around Julius Hughes at 568 at 243 mile an hour to Hughes' 633, but she was late as Christmas and he was early as Hanukkah. Yeah, if that's how you put it. Yeah, he had an 043 light, which is excellent. Yes. And uh, and Mindy Mindy had she made, a, she made a mistake on the starting line. She had a, a 235, which is, as she'll say, completely unacceptable. Our tongues are hanging out a little bit in this Kentucky heat, but we went out there in the second session, which was our first. Thing smoked the tires. I had to pedal it three times, still couldn't get it to hook up. Came back, thrashed three of us, got it out there for the third final, backed against the wall, do or die, went A to B, ran a 589, and got in the show. We go through a lot of pistons in a nostalgia top field dragster as you can see and we got plenty more in the trailer and it's going to take 
quite a few to go three rounds today. We'll burn as many as we can to beat a winner today at the Hot Rod Reunion. Our first round top fuel eliminator, Dusty Green and Turbo Tim Cullinan have both insisted that they'll throw whatever it takes to advance. And Dusty Green may have already thrown everything he has at it. The truck car sounds terrible on the burnout. It, it barely spun the tire. And, and Turbo Tim's having problems too, keeping it lit. Dusty's car is still running. Uh, lucky for us, they're going through the uh, completing the burnout procedure so we get to look at the person guiding her back, but that thing does not sound good. Crew guy says shut the thing off. Yeah, so uh, it'll be a single for, for Turbo Tim and the IRA, Team IRA I car. See. So they don't have to really throw down any bombs. They can in just enjoy uncontested victory. Just raging frustration, all the effort it took to get to this event, uh, the do or die to qualify, and they don't even get the satisfaction of making the lap. You know, I, I tell you what, it's it's one reason to hate the sport. Yes. Because it is so friggin' difficult sometimes, and you just you can't ever get out of the hole that you're in. Tim Cullen in again, playing with house money. Juts it off early, goes down there, saves saves all his parts. Ready to go to the next round, and he's gonna have to race Mindy Fry, so he needs to have all of his best parts in their finest working order. You know, honestly, I really don't want to relive the 60s or the 50s or anything like that. I'm in the now, and uh, I happen to be in one of these cars because I think they're the baddest nitro car that's out there right now. And um, if I wanted to relive the 60s, I'd rebuild, you know, my dad's car or run a cackle car or something like that. But that doesn't particularly interest me. I like to drive these cars. It's a fun event. I think we let the elephant out of the cage. It's starting to run really good. Went 209 and a half track. Went 595, shutting it off pretty early. I think we got something for these guys from San Francisco. My opinion is we should have done a street race between San Francisco and San Jose. Five grand, meet me at Kenyatta Road. So Brendan Murray insists that the elephant is out of the cage. And you, as you alluded to earlier, Witt, uh, a mouse is one of the few things that can scare an elephant. Brendan Murray, this is his chance. I mean, if, if you look at these two cars mm -hmm. in, in generality, yes. He is at a big disadvantage, but they're struggling right now. That, that little motor is blowing itself up. Yes. If he's going to take them out, now's the time. He has to not be himself. Every dog has his day. Maybe every elephant has his day also. Brendan Murray. I mean, he was well ahead, it was almost a perfect run until the very end, and he almost did give it away. You know, looking at these guys walk off the starting line, the champion team, you, you have to feel for them. But th this is what drag racing is. It is so incredibly humbling mm -hmm. at every level. Right. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. It, it's all about right now. Like Adam said, he lives in the now. Uh -huh. and, and this is the now, and the now for them is a difficult situation. Yeah. You, you, you be here now, but the now is crushing. The now is crushing. So uh, that takes us to our semifinal pairings. We have Mindy Fry against Turbo Tim Cullinan, and we have the uh, the dark horse slash elephant Brendan Murray, who will uh, attempt to stare down Jim Young. Semi-final action, uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, the Holly Hot Rod Reunion. It's really not a mouthful. I don't know why I have a problem just getting out those four words, but uh, yes. Are, Are they here? paying you? Uh, if they're paying me, I am definitely working cheap. So That's why you struggle with it. I do struggle. And, uh, <laughs> But, if I can say so. But if I can only overcome my struggles in the same way that Brendan Murray apparently has overcome his struggles. Here he is facing up against uh, Jim Young. And, and let me tell you something about Brendan. I mean, this man lives and breathes top fuel. He has said, the thing about top fuel racing is that you have to hate money and love work. That's, that's funny. My dad told me that after a couple of his first drag races uh -huh. that he went to. Uh, when I started, he's like, son, 
I think to do this sport, you have to hate money. He didn't get the work part well, of it. Well, right. Until we burned yeah. the thing to the ground once or twice, and then he still didn't get it. But So Brendan has, that's funny. hasn't so much burned it to the ground as he has burned off his eyebrows. So uh, he has done that. Yeah. Well. He's overcome that, and uh, he's trying to make uh, the scene against Jim Young, who has been the pick to click. made any difference as far as what came out of the car because he was on some sort of samurai sleigh ride. I mean, <laughs> wow, that was nuts. Well, you can see the left tire got out of the groove a little bit and, yeah. and, then, uh, and then the whole car was in These cars, they don't have much downforce right. and they have a small tire. So, yes. And it's still a fuel motor. I mean, uh -huh. it's still making several thousand horsepower. Right. They're real race cars. They're badass. They're going to spin the tire when they're when they're not in the groove. Well, so that brings us to who will eventually be his competition, and that is either Turbo Tim Cullinan, or, as we've alluded to, the illustrious Nitro Kitty Mindy Fry. Who's your money on? Uh, I have no money, as we've already determined. I work for next to nothing. <laughs> Whoa. Well, something just happened there or didn't happen. Uh, another bizarre burnout. Uh, Mindy's, of course, looks very strong. Turbo Tim is having some problems. It's rather frantic. I don't know if there's something with the throttle stop is wrong or what's going on, but he went 60 feet and his crew member is down there 250 feet. Yeah, the thing didn't spin the tire at all. Well, they're backing it's it up, so. Not a good sign. Well, earlier, yeah, you can see how frantic he is. Uh, something is just uh, horribly wrong. He's asking them, the guys to help shut the thing off, so they, they loosen the fuel line there. I see. Shut off easily. And, uh, so, bummer, bummer yeah, for him. Turbo Tim, yeah. a dead player. Uh, Mindy Fry now has an opportunity to test the track like she's been doing all weekend. This car has been the toast of the event. Well, for sure, and, and you know, you make your own luck, and uh, so now all she has to do is not make a mistake. I mean, it's, right. it's a free run, yes, and uh, she's in the final. Get a good run, so they have data for the final. to the clutch a little bit. Uh, it finally goes one-to-one, -one and then she clicks it. So 573 at 220 miles an hour on a solo run will mean that she gets to square off against the uh, thorn in the Nitro Kitty's paw, which is Jim Young, who has had her number either as a tuner or a driver in the last two Heritage Series events. It's actually the two best cars. Yes. Uh, the two top drivers that have had the best results lately, and uh, you know that's what we want to see: a great drag race side by side and uh, very competitive. All right, then. That concludes semifinal action from the Holly Hot Rod reunion. Come back for the final round between the two fiercest and most fearless competitors in the deal right now: Mindy Fry and Jim Young. So here we go. Jim Young uh, is going to attempt to make yet another statement. He closed out the 2017 season with a victory at the California Hot Rod Reunion. Uh, he tuned Pete Wittenberg to victory at the March Beat as he drove around uh, Mindy Fry. Mindy wants to undo some of that psychic damage. Uh, you alluded earlier, Witt, to the one number she's worried about, which is her reaction time. Is that really what it is? Yeah, that's a big part of it. I mean, you've got to leave on time, and, uh -huh. uh, and you've got to keep the car in the groove. So that's the, the driver's job is to go A to B no matter what. No matter what the car does, right. spins a tire, you get it to recover. If it wants to move around a little bit, yes. you keep it in the center of the groove so you don't lose traction. So you, and, and before you do any of that, you've got to leave on time. It's all an ego battle. 
Well, yes. is it life? So this is a microcosm for life. Yeah, well, and, and it is. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Jim Young wants to out to Tom Sheilar and out drive Mindy Fry both. Yes, he does, and, and he, he can do both, but it, it's a it's a tough challenge. Again, Mindy still has a card the car to beat, I think, and when she's on her Mindy game, she's hard to beat herself. James Young, Mindy Fry, who's going to be the next? Oh my god, 572 and 250 miles an hour defeats Jim Young's uh, sawing S's 584, 256. Uh, margin of victory, six one hundredths of a second. Six one hundredths, pretty close, you know, and he did lead first. And uh, But again, you know, you've got to keep that thing in the center of the racetrack. Right. And in the car, when it moves out, I mean, it had the right tire out of the roof quite a bit. Yes. And and it, it's going to lose traction. It's going to spin. 52 miles an hour. Jim. Huh? Jim, who won? Jim Young, he did know that he lost. Is that right? He's, he's, he'll admit he's not the best loser in the world. Mindy appears, appears to be a good winner, which is the easy part. One, two, three, five, Spectacular finish. It was a good race, good weekend. Yes. So that'll be it for Bowling Green 2018, the Holly Heritage Hot Rod. Some really, yeah, a bunch of that. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the next one will be in Boise at the Night Fire Nationals, and uh, we hope to see you there. The